Hi, Art Noble here. I'm the author of The Sacred Female and an expert in sexual biology and sexual love. Now, when it comes to sexual biology, we all approach it from our own perspective, uh, based on our limited experience and our, uh, uh, what we've been told by others. And <laughs> it's true no matter where we go. Now, the purpose of this series is to give you some information, the best information we have available today on sexual biology. Female ejaculation seems to be a very hot topic, so I thought you might be interested in a history of female ejaculation. Now, it's only been for the past 200 years or so that women and men have been conned out of female uh, ejaculation. Now, I prefer the term orgasmic discharge, female orgasmic discharge, and prefer to use female ejaculation for a specific phenomenon. Now, you see, the problem is there are three sources of female orgasmic discharge. The first is from the female prostate, formerly called the periurethral glands, that uh, may range from 5 to 15 milliliters, about the same quantity as male ejaculate. The second is from the uh, urinary bladder, which is not urine, although it may be mixed with urine, uh, and that will range from half a cup to a cup, uh, 250 milliliters. And then the third source of female orgasmic discharge is from the vagina, from a ring of glands in the vagina just in back of the uh, hymeneal area where the hymen used to be. Now, in terms of history, we have found statues and figurines dating back 30,000 years, 25 to 30,000 years, regarding uh, female sexuality. Some of these figurines have various markings on them. This sketch I cobbled together to demonstrate a common marking, the series of W's or M's in the genital area. Maria Gumbaras, a highly regarded archaeologist who focused on the feminine, has many books on the living goddesses. She interpreted this symbol as living waters. Quite possible. I would suggest these waters are symbols of female ejaculation, the shorter one being prostatic ejaculation, the longer being urinary bladder discharge. This is simply another possible way of interpreting these symbols. Also note the oversized vulva. Personally, I see this as a tribute to the magnificent transformative power available to men through sexual love. Now this is a sketch of a female figured pot found at a dig in Romania uh, four to five thousand BCE. Now the sketch is, is from an article by Max Lamartin of Thailand and was sent to me by Dr. Miriam Dexter at UCLA. Note here the short sequence of M's in the genital area. Now the fact of ejaculation may be important because they may have believed it was necessary for conception, or it may have another value. We have known in recorded history for 5,000 years that women ejaculate the, uh, or have an orgasmic uh, discharge. The first record of this is in the Bible, Leviticus 12.2. Now the King James Version says, when a woman conceive a seed and bear a child. But the Hebrew translation from the original Hebrew writing says, when a woman has an emission and bears a male child. Well, as soon as I saw that, um, I knew what they were talking about. But now where did the seed concept come from? Well, it was thought that men ejaculated a seed, women uh, discharged a seed, and these two seeds got together to form a baby. Now, when Hippocrates learned of this in 400 uh, BC, he called it the two-seed theory. Well, it was later, uh, 600 years later, 
in 200 AD, about, confirmed by Galen, who was also the first one to locate the female prostate. And he called it the female prostate, um, the prostate, prostatita. And uh, he, he differed with Hippocrates on the purpose, the additional purpose of the fluid uh, being a nourishing thing for the seeds. But uh, then uh, the Catholic Church, because they were so gung-ho on procreation, promoted female ejaculation from their inception in 325 up until about 1660. But in the meantime, in the early to mid-1600s in France, women stopped ejaculating, possibly as a method of birth control. Now, this is a heck of a sacrifice because female ejaculation, from what I have been told, is eight to ten times more pleasurable than having an orgasm without ejaculation. So that was quite a, a sacrifice for them. Then along about 1660, Leeuwenhoek comes with his microscope he'd invented earlier and looks at male and female ejaculate and can't find uh, he can find the male sperm, but he cannot find a female seed. Well, the church kind of backed off on the concept of ejaculation for procreation, female ejaculation. And besides, uh, this just would contribute to woman's lustful nature. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, a lot of guys just blew it off and said, well, <laughs> Women are inferior, so you probably can't see their seed, you know. Of course, they had no idea that the female egg is 150 times the size of the male sperm. But anyway, yeah, they, they backed off, but they didn't come completely off it until 1784, in which time an Italian scientist artificially inseminated a, uh, uh, a water spaniel and it successfully. So the church then stopped. And now this is 1784. By the early 1800s, we're getting authoritative papers that saying women have no sex drive. And then specifically in terms of female ejaculation, uh, in 1886, Kraft Ebbing said, oh, this is a lesbian condition. Yeah. And then in uh, 1905, Freud, with his little thing on Dora said that uh, he called it a vaginal catara or discharge from the vagina. He didn't know about all this other stuff. They called it a uh, vaginal catara and said that women find it disgusting. Now the first then you know women had just shut down. I mean they didn't want to be called lesbians and, and they didn't want to be thought of as disgusting so they just shut it off. All up here we have tremendous power up here. But then in 1966, Masters and Johnson uh, noted in their experiments that women had this urge to void. Some women had this urge to void. That they shut down. But today, even, some women will have this urge to void as a precursor to either ejaculation or urinary bladder discharge. Um, so it's, it's there. It's real. It's not a figment of anybody's uh, imagination. And it is a normal, healthy sexual response. Well, I'll get into details in subsequent videos, but for right now, thank you for listening and have a great day.